Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez. Welcome to my channel where I talk about entertainment, news, uh, whatever I really feel like talking about. And today we're going to talk about Bob Iger, who is officially no longer the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. And this is strange. And it's strange for all the wrong reasons. First of all, let me just share my personal opinions of Bob Iger. Bob Iger is a brilliant businessman. Seriously, no one can do. Bob Iger did things for the Disney company, and my Disney stock, I should add, that I thought was impossible. Under Iger, Disney bought big names like Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and 20th Century Fox. Bob Iger, as a CEO, took out a major competitor because he just bought them. That's crazy. Also, under Bob Iger, we had a year where they had like $9 billion films or something crazy like that. It's never been done before. It's unlikely to happen again. Bob Iger has groomed brands to become powerhouses. Bob Iger has a business sense that is unmatched. Also, Bob Iger is bad for Disney. In a strange way, despite all the success, he is bad for Disney. Now, one of the good things I forgot to mention, although it was kind of on purpose, is the theme parks. Bob Iger revitalized California Adventure, expand, built a Star Wars land, and he expanded the parks to where, before he came, the parks were actually kind of in trouble. People went to Disneyland, yes, but there was a lot of empty park days. You could actually count on which times of the year would be empty. Bob Iger helped fix that. Unfortunately, under Bob Iger, to fix that and making the parks super, super profitable, it has result resulted in Disneyland being way more expensive than it should be, to the point where most families can no longer go because they can't afford to go there. Under Bob Iger, a long-term policy of no sequels for animated movies, you know, was overturned in favor of sequelizing and franchising animated films. Under Bob Iger, he has shaped the Hollywood landscape to be about franchises and tent poles. And here's the thing. Under Bob Iger, Disney became a brand. I will never forget years ago during the same Disney campaign where Roy E. Disney talked about his disgust of the term brand. He said that that you that when a, with a farmer, a farmer would have cows and it would make sense to brand cows because all brands look the same. He said branding is what you do to cows. Branding is what you do when there is nothing original about your product. Unfortunately, Bob Iger turned Disney into a brand. You go to a Marvel movie, you know what you're getting. You go to a Star Wars movie, you know exactly what you're getting. I admit I did not expect to get Frozen 2. That was a surprise. Wasn't necessarily good, but we got it, and it was surprising. But Bob Iger should kind of let the magic of Disney subside. A lot of creative people left the Disney company, because Bob Iger had this mentality of, I need my movies to be able to have a sequel, a theme park attraction, and a toy. And if I can't get all three of those out of a movie, I'm not interested in that movie. That's, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean that's why movies like The Queen, Queen of Katwe, even though it was a brilliant film, got made very little. That's why a movie like McFarland USA, yeah, it got made for like $15 million, but you're not going to see more movies like it because you can't get those things out of a McFarland USA. Bob Iger simultaneously made the biz Disney strong and it made Disney weak. To the point where if one of these franchises starts faltering like Star Wars has been, then Disney Company could be in trouble. And then there was a surprise announcement that he... Has effectively He resigned immediately as CEO, and Bob Chapek, who I'm going to be perfectly honest, I like a lot less than Iger, 
is now the new CEO. Now, there's not much to the news article, um, but here's the thing. Bob Chappick is replacing Bob Iger effective immediately. The company announced Tuesday. Chappick, 60, who has been with the company for 27 years and was most recently chairman of Disney Parks, Experiences, and Products, a position credit created in 2018, will take over Disney's day-to-day operations, the company says. That will allow Iger, who will stay on executive chairman through December 31st, 2021, to focus on the company's overall creative vision and strategy over his remaining two years with the company. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's interesting because Bob Iger is talking about, I want to be more on the creative side. Notice how I was talking about how he was like a great businessman, but not a very good creative person because a creative person would not have franchised Disney the way he did, but a businessman would. Now, there are so many reasons why this is wrong. And the reason this is primarily wrong is because this is not how CEOs, uh, how should I put this? This is not how a peaceful transition to power, this is not what it looks like. Not for a company. A company, if they are super unsatisfied with the CEO, will fire the CEO. And they will say, hey, this person has has been fired, effective immediately, and this person will take their place. Or this person will act as the intern CEO until we fill that position. You just don't do that. Iger has extended retirement four times. This most recent time, he was to stay on the Disney board, or stay keep running the, the company, I should say, for 36 months. We're in month 14 of that. He did this suddenly. He said he did this because he wants to focus on the creative side of the company, a side he's not particularly talented at running. Like, that's why he has Kevin Feige and Kathleen Kennedy Running, the, running Star Wars and Marvel, because um, he he's not good at that sort of thing. It happens. It happened suddenly. It was immediate. They had, and they had someone who only has one particular skill in a lot of Disney fans' eyes, and we'll talk about that skill. But make no mistake, I believe Bob Iger was fired. In a sense, he's kind of being John Lasseter, if you will, where John Lasseter took a sabbatical, and then remained on in a consulting position for several months before finally just leaving the company. Like, Iger wasn't fired, but he's been heavily demoted. And if you watch the interview with him and uh, Chappick um, explaining the transfer to power, Iger looks super uncomfortable, like he doesn't want to be there. And nobody was expecting this. Over 200,000 employees, the board... It seemed a little surprised. The stock went, got hit heavily because of this transaction. So why did it happen? Well, let's take a look at some like the less offensive, but maybe more like, but maybe possible scenarios. One, and Iger said this today, he was just tired of running the company. I mean, that could be true. Maybe he's just tired of running the company, but still, it's poor form to just up and quit like that. So. You know, I don't think I would necessarily believe that. The second reason, hey, he's just come off his most successful year ever. Nine billion dollar films, opened Star Wars Land, got Disney tickets to over two hundred dollars a day, still got Disney annual pass fans to take stupid pills in the morning and renew the passes. Uh, he was able to get a couple movies nominated for Best Picture. He was able to steal Best Animated Film from Klaus, gave it to Toy Story 4. He was able to launch Disney+, Plus. he completed the 20th Century Fox acquisition deal. Hey, you know what, the upcoming year, you know what's happening? Coronavirus, uh, theme park ticket sales will be down, cruise, uh, cruises will be canceled, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. The way that this is supposed to work is that, hey, they give a deadline for when this CEO is going to retire. They announce a replacement months in advance. They ease the transition of power. They give him like maybe the second in command job for a little while, get to know the ropes. And then the CEO retires and passes it along. This was done the opposite direction. Bob Iger steps down to CEO immediately, gives 
um, Chapek, the CEO position without actually having run the company for a little while, and then decides, hey, I'm going to step into the second-in-command role. That, that's what happened. So it, it kind of leads me to believe one of two major things. Either one, Bob Iger did something really bad, and they're trying to kind of get ahead of it, or maybe the company is really not doing very well. And and here's kind of what my suspicion is, because Bob Chappick, you want to know what he is known as among Disney fans? He's known as Bob the Cheapskate. Because every t- under his leadership with parks, whenever they do something with the parks or the renovation or anything, he would always cut corners. Where can we cut a corner? Star Wars Land was supposed to have a heck of a lot more rides than two. But he kept pushing, pulling back on rides. Let's add more shops. Let's add more diners. Let's let's you know let's make it more of a mall. That was basically him. And Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has been a pretty big flop. Now, it's doing a little better with the Rise of the Resistance. People seem to really like that ride. But it kind of goes to show that he's not particularly popular with Disney fans. Now, here's why I believe he might have been hired, if my suspicions are true. Disney's got a debt problem. They have got a lot of debt, primarily because they way overpaid for 21st Century Fox. We might want to think that Disney has all the money in the world, but they are limited, and while the 20th Century Fox um, purchase was manageable, it left them vulnerable. And then you have Rise of Skywalker, which was a billion-dollar film. Let's not take that away. But they wanted to be a $2 billion film. And even though you might think, like, well, they must have made their money back from Star Wars. They haven't made their money back from Star Wars. Because it, they spent $4 billion on Star Wars in the franchise. But unlike Pixar or Marvel, who had studios up and running, Disney had to invest in setting up another studio operation, hiring the people, getting that all lined up. And so Star Wars has cost quite a bit more than what the purchase price was. And the results have not been what they wanted. So they overpaid for Star Wars. They probably have lost money on Star Wars. It's hard to... I hate to say it. So... I think the era of Disney just growing and growing kind of hit a wall. I think the executives were looking, the investors were looking at the books, and they said, hey, you know, we're like one flop away from being bought out again or something like that. So, hey, you get rid of Bob, but hey, you're going to have him step down because he's done a lot of good things for the company, and you hire the new Bob who will cut corners. And Bob Chapnick is the guy who will say, hey, we're not going to spend this much money on this. We're not going to spend this much. Honestly, he reminds me a lot about Michael Eisner. Because Michael Eisner was very much a similar way. He, he was a penny pincher. And, like, he would, like, buy ABC for, like, I don't know how much they bought ABC for. Let's just say it's $50 million. And he'd go home, like, oh, could I have gotten it for 54 for, like, $45 million? I mean, that, that's the kind of guy he was. So I think Disney's entering an era where they're kind of looking at the future and it's not looking so great. Uh, their theme park attendance will go down. The amount of people who renew their pass will go down. Disney Cru- Cruise Line, that will go down, especially as the coronavirus is out there. Mulan will most likely lose money at first because it's not going to be opening in China right away. Onward is not going to be a big hit. The Eternals will probably be- bring Marvel's winning streak to an end, or at the very least, it's going to be a moderate at best um, success. And then you have Disney Plus, which I don't think is going to be a true Netflix competitor. I think that's going to be HBO Max. But, you know, one of the downsides of having your own streaming service is that you get a bunch of people paying $6 a month for something. But they're also not buying DVDs, Blu-rays, and hey, um, remember the time when you could release two or three Disney movies a month? And you could make, and people spend like $90 on those three movies? Well, let's say 60 because most got them on sale. Those same people are now just spending $6 a month to watch whatever they want. It's it's an interesting direction to take the company. So I don't think this was... I I think this wasn't planned. I think this was a surprise to Iger. I think Iger got fired, personally. I I truly believe he got fired. And we're just going to have to wait and see if I'm correct. These things usually come in threes. But don't be too surprised... If a big scandal breaks out and then Iger's made the fall guy, I would be very surprised if he stayed with the company 
through December 2021. I think he's going to be gone long before then. I don't even think he might not even last the summer for all we know. But anyway, that's my thought on this. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.